How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. Now on today's show we're going to be taking a look back at the Champions League action from Tuesday night. Plenty of games and a lot of goals. Um, and the last piece of news, we're going to be talking about Arsenal and William Saliba because Mikel Arteta has been speaking about the current situation and he has admitted that he is fed up. I represent my fucking self. How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So the first place we're going to start is Tuesday night's Champions League action. Plenty of games, plenty of goals. Liverpool and Manchester City were playing as well. And um, some very, very interesting score lines. Um, first one was Lokomotiv Moscow against Atletico Madrid. And it finished 1-1. Not a great result for Atletico Madrid, to be honest with you. Um, it's been a bit of a mixed start to the Champions League. They've won a game, they've drawn a game and they've lost a game. Um, so they're sitting second at the moment on four points, but they could be one of these sides, if they're not careful, drop down into the Europa League. Now, they've done it before. I know all about that because they knocked Arsenal out of the semi-finals. Um, so they're going to have to start winning in the Champions League. And um, in terms of this game, um, it was Jimenez that uh, scored after 18 minutes. Um, but Lokomotiv equalised from the penalty spot seven minutes later. And that is how the game stayed. Um, next up, we have Shakhtar Donetsk against Borussia Mönchengladbach. And this was a very, very emphatic 6-0 win for Borussia Mönchengladbach. And they've now scored the most goals in the Champions League this season. Um, a hat-trick for play. Um, I believe that might be how it's pronounced. I'm not 100% sure. Um, Bonda with an own goal. Um, I'm not even going to pronounce that guy's name. And Stindl. Um, don't give me the easiest of times today with some of these names. But um, yeah, very, very, very comfortable uh, for Bruce in München Gladbach. Now, another game that was very comfortable, and I'm quite surprised by this result, to be honest. Atlanta nil, Liverpool 5. An absolute battering. Um, Jota with a hat-trick, Mo Salah and Mane. And Jota, his time at Liverpool, short you know, time at that since he's joined from Wolves, has been nothing short of phenomenal. Um, and you've got to start Asking questions about um, him starting for Liverpool in the Premier League against, um, you know, the likes of Firmino, for example. Should he be taken out of the side? It's going to be a very, very interesting decision for Jurgen Klopp to make. But um, on the face of it, it doesn't look like too much of a difficult decision because um, Jota's on fire right now. Um, next up, we have um, FC Michelin against Ajax. And uh, of course, this was the game where we weren't sure if it was going to go ahead because of the 11 positive tests for um, COVID to Ajax players. Um, but they were 2-0 up inside 13 minutes. Tadic's uh, goal, the second one, was quite funny because it was an indirect free kick right on the edge of the six-yard box. Um, Michelin got a goal back on 18 minutes, but that is the way it stayed. Um, FC Porto against Marseille. Um, and this was comfortable 3 0 win for Marseille. And the Marseille uh, manager, <laughs> I do have to laugh, um, Villas Boas, um, that he was saying about, um, to get into the Champions League, something along them lines. I ain't got the exact quote, but it was quite funny. Um, about, you know, being shit. And, um, yeah, he's making it pretty obvious that, you know, his team shit. And uh, the results are showing that they've been shit because um, in the opening, um, what, we had three games in the Champions League. Marseille have played three, lost three. Yeah, they're already six points behind Porto with two um, games where they've got to catch up and hope that Porto lose and there's only three games left. Um, Manchester City are looking very, very comfortable at the top um, of that group. And um, the reason why they're sitting there, top of that group, is because they beat Olympiacos 3-0. 
It's a shame Arsenal couldn't do that last season, isn't it? Um, Torres, um, Gabriel Jesus, and then Cancelo um, putting the icing on the cake. It was 1-0 until the 81st minute. Um, so I suppose those two late goals kind of give a better reflection on the scoreline. But Manchester City, they're doing what they need to do. They're um, top of their group. They're going to qualify uh, for the knockout stages. And that's um, a great result for them all round. Uh, next up, we have Real Madrid against Inter Milan. What a game this was. 3-2 to Real Madrid. Uh, Martinez and Perisic for Inter Milan. Benzema, um, Rodrigo and Sergio Ramos for Real Madrid. Now, Sergio Ramos, that's over 100 goals for Real Madrid. He's a centre-back. He has to go down as one of the best centre-backs of his generation um, one of the best centre-backs in world football, to be honest with you, are to score that many goals. Are you mad for a centre-back? Absolutely crazy. Um, you're looking at the scoring. Um, Real Madrid went into the lead. Um, they went 2-0 up through Ramos. Uh, Martinez pulled one back. Uh, Perisic equalised. And then Real Madrid won with uh, 10 minutes to go. And that was... A good result for them. And they needed that, given home advantage as well. Um, and the state of the table and the way it is, it's tight. It's really, really difficult to call this one. Uh, Munch and Gladbach are top on five points. Shakhtar Donetsk on four. Real Madrid on four. And Inter Milan on two. So you're looking at that and you're thinking, maybe Real Madrid and Inter Milan, one of those two could drop down into the Europa League. How's your luck, Arsenal? Yeah, great. Um, but yeah, that's a, a big win. Big, big win for Real Madrid, like I was saying. Um, last game was Red Bull Salzburg against Bayern Munich. Do I even need to talk about what happened in this game? We already know. 6-2 to Bayern Munich. Um, they actually went a goal behind and it was as though you woke them up. Um, you annoyed them. And... Um, Within 21 minutes, Lewandowski had equalised. Um, just before um, half-time, they went 2-1 ahead. Um, and then, very interestingly, um, Salzburg equalised and it was 2-2. And it stayed that way until the 80th minute of the game. 2-2 until the 80th minute of the game. And then Jerome Boateng, um, Leroy Sané... And Lewandowski again. And then Hernandez in the 92nd minute. Makes it look like a very, very, very easy evening for Bayern Munich. And um, I suppose when you look at the table as well. Look at it. They're sitting there at the top. Three games, three wins. Nine points, plus nine goal difference. Um, Fleckham Madrid, of course, in their group. And their second with Lokomotiv third and Salzburg last. Um, so I suppose it's going to be between those three, really, because Fletco are on four, Lokomotiv on two, and Salzburg on one. So one of those three are going to drop down into the Europa League. But I'll tell you something, it's not going to be Bayern Munich. Thank goodness for that. So that is the um, roundup for the Champions League games on um, Tuesday night. And, uh, of course, tomorrow we'll go through um, Wednesday night's games. And... Um, there were some interesting games in there as well and some interesting score lines. I'm trying not to laugh, but um, yeah, there was definitely some talking points, should we say. Um, next up, we have the situation involving William Saliba and uh, Mikel Arteta has admitted that he is fed up with the current situation. Um, Saliba arrived, of course, at the Emirates from St. Etienne for £27 million in 2019. He spent last season back on loan Um but only made 17 appearances in all competition. Now, of course, you've got to remember there was COVID and everything else. Uh, the 19-year-old was incorporated into the Gunner squad for this campaign, but he has yet to spend a single minute on the pitch and has been left out of their Europa League squad. Um, St Etienne accused Arsenal of uh, reigning on an agreement to send Saliba back to France on deadline day, something the Premier League side denied while prospective loans to championship clubs also failed to materialise. 
It has led to underwhelming introduction to English football for Saliba and Arteta appears to share for the France under 20 internationals frustration. Um, he said, I'm fed up with the situation because as you could see, we tried to find a way in the last few days of the window to give him some football. I explained that he needed that transition year uh, when we decided to buy him and send him on loan to St Etienne. For many reasons that did not happen. He didn't have that transition year um, and he needs to go through that. At the moment, with the amount of central defenders we have in the team, we had to leave him out of the squad, which is painful. Now we have some injuries and we could have used him, but this is part of the profession. Um, Arteta also added that a loan move in January could be a possibility, um, saying that we certainly tried in the last few days of the transfer window to find the right club, but we could not. Um, we will review the situation in the next few weeks and sit down with him and see what is the best thing to do, but it will depend on him and other players' situations as well. So yeah, um, we all know the reason why he's not in the Europa League squad and Mikel Arteta has already said that he regrets it given the injuries and everything else, but he's available for the Premier League, but we're not going to throw him in at the deep end. Maybe the Manchester City game in the Carabao Cup, he could get some minutes in there. Um, but I think he's getting fed up of being asked a question now. I think that's what this is based on more than anything. It's just constant question after question after question. And I think it's just boring the life out of everyone. William Saliba is an unbelievable player and an unbelievable talent, but he needs to get minutes and he needs to get this transitional period. So we'll wait and see what happens. I can't say no more than that. So there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. As usual, let me know in the comment section what you think about today's topics. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, smash a like on this video and I'll see you lot soon. I'm out of here.